7 Temptations in the Bible The Bible warns us that temptation is inevitable in this fallen world. As Christians, we must be on guard against the tactics and schemes of the devil, who seeks to lure us into sin. Though temptation itself is not sin, if we give in to it, it leads to death and destruction. Thankfully, God provides us a way out from every temptation, 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13. By relying on Him and His Word, we can stand firm when trials and enticements come. We must flee from sin and pursue righteousness, fighting the good fight of faith. Dear fellow believer, throughout the Bible we find stories of people who faced temptation and either fell into sin or faithfully overcame it. From the first temptation in the Garden of Eden to the temptation of Christ, Scripture shows us the tragic consequences when we give into sin as well as the blessings when we stand firm in God's truth. In examining seven significant temptations in the Bible, we can uncover spiritual lessons about the nature and power of temptation, the tactics of the devil, the importance of God's word, and keys to walking in victory. Though we will look at the failures of Eve, David, Solomon, and others, we must remember that in Christ we have redemption and forgiveness. He sympathizes with our struggles, and provides the grace to overcome, Hebrews 4 verse 14 to 16. As we explore these seven temptations, my prayer is that it would exhort and equip you to stand against the wiles of the devil. We know that one day all temptation will cease and we will dwell with Jesus in glory. Until then, let us live as more than conquerors through him who loved us, Romans 8 verse 37. Let's start. Number one, the original temptation, Genesis 3. In Genesis 3, we find the tragic story of the enemy tempting Eve in the Garden of Eden. This original temptation illustrates fundamental truths about the nature of temptation that are still relevant today. The crafty serpent approached Eve and sowed seeds of doubt about God's command not to eat the forbidden fruit. He twisted God's good command into a lie, making her question the Lord's motives and goodness. Though Eve was without sin at that point, the temptation appealed to her natural desires. The tree was pleasing to the eye, good for food, and offered wisdom. Tragically, Eve believed the deception and ate the fruit in rebellion against God's command. Then she gave some to Adam, who was with her, and he also ate. This first sin opened the floodgates for all future temptation and sin to enter the human race. Its consequences were devastating, introducing death, pain, conflict, sorrow, disease, and all manner of evil into creation. Dear friend, often our temptations follow a similar pattern. The enemy slyly plants doubt in our minds about God's commands and seduces us to rebel against his word. Temptation appeals to our fleshly desires for pleasure, comfort, and independence from God. It deceives us into thinking we know better than our Creator. But as Eve learned, going our own stubborn way leads only to bondage, while walking in loving obedience to Christ brings life and freedom. Let us be on guard against the serpent's schemes and hold fast to the truth of God's word. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6 verse 23. Number 2. Abraham lies about Sarah, Genesis 12 and 20. In Genesis 12 and 20, we read about a time when Abraham yielded to the temptation to lie about his wife Sarah. Driven by fear, Abraham allowed himself and Sarah to participate in a deception. This failure reminds us of the importance of trusting God to protect and provide, rather than taking matters into our own hands. When Abraham and Sarah traveled to Egypt and the region of Gerar, Abraham feared that someone might kill him to take his beautiful wife. So he asked Sarah to lie and say she was only his sister not his wife. Sure enough, in both cases the king took Sarah into his palace, intending to make her part of his harem. But God sovereignly intervened each time to protect Sarah and confront the kings for taking her. Abraham's lie was foolish and unnecessary. If he had trusted God and told the truth, the Lord would have kept his promise to bless and care for him no matter what. This story warns us that giving into temptation often stems from fear and lack of faith in God. When we take matters into our own hands, scheme and manipulate outcomes, we show we do not really trust the Lord's power and goodness, 
we must turn from faithless fabrications and lean on Christ alone. His perfect love casts out all fear. He is always faithful, even when we are faithless. Let us hold fast to the truth that he who keeps Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. Psalm 121 verse 4. Number 3. Achan's sin leads to defeat. Joshua 7. In Joshua 7, we learn a sobering lesson about how one person's secret sin can impact an entire community. When Achan gave in to temptation and stole devoted items from Jericho, it led to Israel's defeat at Ai. Ai. His covetousness cost the lives of innocent men. God commanded the Israelites not to take any of the silver, gold, or religious idols from Jericho, because the city was devoted to destruction. But Achan saw beautiful clothing and treasures and secretly took them, burying them in his tent. This sin brought God's wrath on Israel when they next went into battle. After being defeated at Ai, Joshua cried out to God. The Lord revealed that someone had transgressed his covenant, and Achan was identified by casting lots. Because he had brought wrath and calamity on Israel, Achan and his family were stoned to death. The consequences of Achan's hidden sin teach us that temptation affects more than just us. No one sins in isolation. Especially among God's covenant people, secret compromise and disobedience bring corporate damage. The enemy looks for the weakest sheep to pick off and destroy. Let us encourage one another daily, lest any be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. For we are members of one another, and the body suffers when any part sins against the head who is Christ. We must cast off every weight and run with endurance the race set before us. Hebrews 121. Number 4. David succumbs to adultery and murder. 2 Samuel 11:12. 12. One of the most tragic accounts of giving into temptation is found in 2 Samuel 11, 12, where King David committed adultery and murder. Though formerly a man after God's own heart, David's devastating moral failure began when he remained at the palace while his troops went to war. On an evening when he gazed down from his rooftop and saw Bathsheba bathing, instead of averting his eyes, lust filled his heart. He inquired about her, slept with her while her husband Uriah was fighting in Israel's army, and got her pregnant. When David's attempts to cover up his sin failed, he arranged for Uriah's murder. The prophet Nathan confronted David, declaring that because of his evil, he would suffer future calamity. David was heartbroken and repentant when Nathan declared, You are the man. Though God forgave David when he confessed, the consequences were immense. The death of the child, turmoil and violation in his own household, and perpetual warfare. David's failure highlights how temptation so often begins with idle hands and wandering eyes. We must guard our eyes and fill our minds and time with God's word and ways. Sin always costs more than we imagined. God in his mercy forgives and restores when we repent, but sometimes earthly consequences remain. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man, and God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but will provide the way of escape also, so that you will be able to endure it. 1 Corinthians 10 verses 12 to 13. Number 5. Solomon's wives turn his heart from God. 1 Kings 11 verses 1 to 11. One of the most sobering examples of giving into temptation is Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived. Early in his reign, Solomon loved the Lord and walked in obedience. God blessed him with unimaginable wisdom, wealth, and power. But tragically, the temptation of foreign women drew his heart away from the God who had blessed him. Against God's command not to marry foreign wives, Solomon took 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. God warned that his wives would turn his heart to worship false gods, but Solomon would not listen. He built high places and altars for his wives' abominable idols. So the Lord became angry with Solomon and declared the kingdom would be torn from him. Solomon's failure shows us that no one, not even the wisest man on earth, is beyond the reach of temptation. Sin promises satisfaction but delivers only bitter emptiness. In the end, Solomon concluded that all the pleasure, work, and wealth in life is meaningless without God. Fear God and keep his commandments, Solomon wrote, for this is the whole duty of man. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. Let us hear and heed the warning of Solomon. May we turn from earthly pleasures that would cloud our devotion to Christ 
He alone is worthy of our complete love and obedience. Number 6. Judas betrays Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Matthew 26, 14, 16. No passage illustrates the devastating effects of giving into temptation like Judas's betrayal of Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. After walking intimately with Jesus and hearing his teaching for three years, Judas turned him over to be crucified for the price of a slave. When Judas went to the chief priests seeking payment for handing Jesus over, they were delighted to give him 30 silver coins. At the Passover meal, Jesus declared that one of his disciples would betray him. Saying it would have been better if Judas had never been born, Jesus told him, What you are about to do, do quickly. John 13, 27. Leading a mob to arrest him, Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss. Later, he felt remorse and hanged himself. This tragic account warns us that resisting temptation requires faith. Judas heard Jesus' words and saw his works, but did not truly believe. Temptation exposed the true condition of his heart. Outwardly, Judas appeared a disciple, but inwardly he was controlled by the love of money. Judas's life reminds us that we must vigilantly guard our hearts from the deceitfulness of sin. Let us cling to Christ daily and walk by the Spirit, so we will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. Matthew 6.21 Number 7 Peter denies knowing Jesus, Matthew 26, verses 69 to 75. Finally, we learn vital truths about resisting temptation from Peter's tres denials of Christ. On the night Jesus was betrayed, Peter confidently insisted that even if all others fall away, he will remain loyal. But when accusations flew and the pressure mounted, Peter crumbled and denied Jesus three times, even cursing to emphasize his lies. Immediately, the rooster crowed just as Jesus had predicted. Peter remembered Christ's words and went outside and wept bitterly. Though Peter sinned greatly, unlike Judas, he did not harbor deception in his heart from the beginning. Temptation revealed weakness in faith, not outright rejection of Christ. Later, Jesus graciously reinstated Peter with the admonition, Feed my sheep. John 21 verse 17. From Peter's failure, we learn the importance of prayer, honesty about our vulnerability, and dependence on the Spirit in the hour of trial. Though Peter sincerely meant what he said, his good intentions were not enough to overcome temptation. We must humbly admit that apart from Christ, we can do nothing. Our only hope is to abide in Him, stay alert and pray, lest we enter into temptation. Mark 14 verse 38. Dear Christian, from reflecting on these seven temptations, I hope you feel better equipped and motivated to resist the devil when he comes calling. We know that Jesus was also tempted, yet he did not sin. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews 4.14 16 Though the deceitfulness of sin wages war against our souls, by God's grace and the power of His Spirit, we can stand firm. Take up the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you will be able to resist and stand your ground. Ephesians 6.13 Watch and pray. Fill your mind with Scripture. Pursue holiness. Remain humble and quick to repent. Walk by the Spirit. Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. May we all say with Paul, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2 verse 20. Be strong in the Lord. Resist the devil.